Armed with a hammer and a screwdriver for protection, a terrified couple hurry to a public telephone. The time, six o'clock in the morning. The date, October the 7th, 1965. The place, a Manchester Overspill Council estate. Which service do you require? Police, there's been a m murder. A few hours earlier, the youth, 17-year-old David Smith, had witnessed the brutal murder with an axe of another teenage boy at the nearby home of his sister-in-law. What unfolded from Smith's call to police was to shock a nation and unveil a series of murders which were to become the most notorious in British criminal history. Whole generations have grown up unaware of the horror of what happened 35 years ago and for many who do remember, the precise details have evaporated in the mists of time. For the first time on television, we tell the complete, up-to-date story of child killers Ian Brady and Myra Hindley. Tonight and in the following two programmes, we trace the sadistic killing spree which led to police combing the moors for bodies. And how, after 20 years of silence, confessions by the pair brought about a second search and further evidence of their brutality. The story is told by the mothers of the victims and the detectives involved. I was a young detective constable um, stationed at Hyde on the 7th of October 1965 uh, when I was called out uh, about half past seven in the morning uh, to be told that there had been a murder committed at 16 Waterbrook Avenue, Hattersley, the night before. The body was still believed to be in the house uh, and also that the occupants were in possession of firearms. Bob Talbot, who the superintendent, he in actual fact was in uniform uh, and we spotted a um, bread man who was in the area with his white coat and his basket. Uh, Bob Talbot went and borrowed the white coat and the basket from the bread man and he then walked um, along the walkway and when he knocked on the door, the door was answered by Myra Hindley. When we got into the lounge, and there's a man in his underclothes in bed in the lounge, and that turned out to be Ian Brady. He was told why we were there, and uh, Bob Talbot and Alec Carr went to search the upstairs. The bedroom door was locked. Hindley told us that's where she kept her firearms, uh, and where the, the key wasn't available. I suggested that we could always get into the bedroom by forcing the door. I think probably that Brady by that time realised that nobody was going to go away and he turned around to Hindley and said you better give them the keys. She then produced the keys, uh, Mr Talbot and Alec Carr went upstairs and found the body of Edward Evans who was in one of the bedrooms trussed up in a fetal position in a plastic bag.